Hi guys, welcome back to Pillars in the Shop. It's a weekday. Candace is uh, working her full-time job. I'm at my shop. I'm gonna put together a couple of, uh, or at least one, and uh, I'm gonna record me putting together at least one uh, uh, shelf, a wall hanging shelf. I did, I did a really nice one. And I'll put a picture up of it up here in the corner or something let you guys see it. And. Uh, I had someone who liked it, but they didn't like the color. I painted it black and dressed it up. It looks pretty nice. I thought it does. So I'll end up selling it to someone else or giving it away. But I'm gonna build one for this person. And uh, they just wanted it to be stained. You know, uh, whether or not I want to stain it dark or light, I'm not sure yet. I'll probably test them. Uh, uh, do some tests, stains on a few pieces of scrap from the wood I'm using for the shelf to see which way I want to go with it. I also, uh, what I, the wood I'm using is uh, pallet wood, you know, and I'm, it just, it's just so abundant that, uh, and lumber has gotten so high that uh, if you, are careful about the pallets you get. Uh, get them the ones that I won't use anything that's stained up with oil or looks like they've had chemicals spilt on them or anything. They look like they've been contaminated with something. I don't want no part of. But there's plenty of them out there that that are good. They're soft pine for the most part, but they're usable for some of the projects I do, and a lot of people use them for projects. And what it helpful is, is that it helps keep the gloss down by using them, of course. I'm not, not to say there's not a time and place to go buy some good woods, you know, some uh, white oak or walnut or, or whatever. If I was here on the list, I have a half dozen types of wood. <clears throat> and I'm not going to say that I won't do that in the future. But right now, I'm, I'm not looking to make a lot of money off the stuff I build. I'm doing it more just to have something to do, make a few bucks to pay me back for the tools I bought, uh, have some content to put on our Pillars in the Shop web uh, YouTube channel. And so most of them will stick with uh, pallets. Now you can, I don't know if I'll ever come across any, but depending on what a pallet is used for, you can find pallets sometimes that are very good wood. I mean, I've heard of pallets being made out of teak. I've heard of pallets being made out of uh, oak. I've seen pallets made out of oak. Uh, most oak pallets I've seen aren't in very good shape because they're used to hold something pretty heavy and they get beat up pretty badly. But sometimes you may, I may come across one or I, maybe in the future I'll come across one that's oak and, and, and looks pretty decent. Maybe I can do something with it and make something nice out of it. And I've heard of walnut. It just depends, you know, what part, you know, it depends on what they have, how much weight they have to support, how durable they have to be, what wood is abundant wherever they're being made at. So, you know, I mean, you can find hardwoods that are, uh, that, pallets, that are made into pallets, but they're, in my part of the country, they might be rare. So anyway, uh, I'm going to take y'all along. It's a really simple shelf I'm building. Uh, I'm going to take you along while I'm doing it, explain what I'm doing with it and why I'm doing it. And uh hope y'all enjoy it. So, it ain't going to build itself. We ought to get cracking. All right, guys, so I've got my board set up here. And what I did is I cut them all 17 inches. Every one of them was 17 inches. And then I went back and I took two inches off each of these. So from 17 to 15 to 13. And I took it off the top. And the reason why I did that, as you can see, I wanted these holes to line up 
across. I thought that kind of looked pretty good. I think it's going to look good when I get done with it. So that's why I cut them that way. And uh, so that's what we're going to work with. I think it's going to be cool. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip them over. I'm going to move them around like this. So you can see the backside aren't looking as nice as the front. That's why I chose to do the side of what I did. I took this board right here. Hope y'all can see it. Shot above my head. And I went and screwed it down to give me something solid to hold on to it with. To get them lined up, rather. Okay, now what I'm going to do. I'm going to take wood like this. And this is scrap wood, too. What this is. It's actually uh, lattice, uh, wood off lattice. Uh, uh, I could put up a lattice fence. I, I underpinned a porch recently with lattice work. I had some left over, so I wrecked it just like I did the uh, pallet and uh, decided to use wood. So I can use wood. I hate to throw it away and burn it. I actually got a little bit outside and letting it get just a little bit weathered and see how that's going to look. This, uh, this is leftover paddle wood. I'm going to use it for two things. One of them, I'm going to use it for spacing. To space the difference. I don't want these boards just up real, real tight. So I'll use it for a spacer. And I'll put it a spacer. Spacer. And I'll put it up against each one. you got to kind of be careful that you don't move the ones you've already spaced out, which I'm going to end up moving all of them again anyway. And if they're not perfect, that's fine. This thing's supposed to simulate an old fence. That's what it's supposed to simulate. So perfection isn't, probably isn't your friend. But you know, you want to have some somewhat uh, uniform. So that's that's why I did it this way. Because most fences do have a little crack, a little space in between. And that's so the wood on the fence can expand when it gets rained on a lot. You put them up real tight. Have you seen fences? Have you seen boards like that when they get wet, they get rained on, and they, they kind of turn a little bit, especially right there where they meet? So you want to give them a little room from. So when you build a fence or whatever, you give it a little space like that for that reason. So I'm going to do it. So that's how I, that's why I'm doing that to simulate that maybe this look like it comes off of an old fence. And. Uh, Staining and how we finish it will help enhance that. I don't want to call it an illusion, but it enhance that look. I'm also going to get wood like this, and this time I'm going to hold all this together. I'm going to use some 18-gauge uh, finished nails. Uh, you can call them what you want to. I, to I, I call them a lot of times Pentac nails. They're just small little finished nails like you would do trim with. And I'll put some glue down. And on top of then I will nail these in. And that's how I'm going to hold them together. Put one at the bottom and one at the top. Just like that. That's going to hold it all together long enough for me to flip it over and put the shelf on. When I put the shelf on, and the shelf's going to be a 2 by 4 like this. And I'm probably going to take it over to the table saw and cut it down a little bit. Uh, at least cut it enough to kind of take some of these nail holes out. I know it should have it. It's supposed to have it. It's supposed to look like uh, fence wood. But I'm gonna take. I don't really need a shelf that wide for this for this uh, application. So I'll cut it down a little bit, and it'll go on the other side, of course. And then from this back side here, when I get it all lined up, I will. Uh, I put at least one screw through these boards here, and this is on the front side, into each one of these here. At least one screw to help hold it in place. Then I'll come back with some, uh, some more of those nails and add some nails to it. So what I'm gonna have to do right now is I'm gonna have to uh, get me another one of these. I have one here, but I don't wanna use it. So I need to get me Another one. Got my 
craft wood pile over here. So they were So I got two of them. I'm gonna cut them. I'm gonna cut them. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my. You can tell I'm well prepared for this here, dude. I think I'll cut them about. Twenty-six inches. So I'll take them over to my little finished saw, my little seven and a half inch saw. And we'll square up the end, and then cut down twenty-seven inches. Have one for the top, one for the bottom. So stand by while we do that. Oh yeah, I kind of like that. So what's wrong with that? I like it. So I'm up. Now, I get my glue ready, which is right behind my camera. Sorry about that. And got to uh, turn my compressor on. So watch your ears. It's gonna get loud for just a little bit. When I find the on and off button, I lose it. I lose it every time I gotta turn it on. I gotta sit here. Yeah, I'm going a little while getting there. Whew! About time. All right. So I'm going to be using an a, uh, 18 gauge, like I said, Pentac gun, Brad nailer, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using three quarter inch nails. Uh, they're Metabo brand, but you can use whatever brand you want to, whatever you get the best price for. I'm going to go ahead and put a few more in the gun here. All right. I'm going to try to hang on to them because they are expensive, so I don't want to waste any of them. The air pressure I have set, I think it's around 60 pounds. Don't hold me to that. I haven't checked this since the last time I, and it should have changed, but I'm pretty sure that's why I set it on last time I did it, made something. I made me a little mark. The mark is, which I don't need but the end marks to nail it, but the mark is so I put glue down, and I know about where to put it. I'm gonna shake her up really and gut her open. You know, I have to learn everything the hard way because I'm not very smart. It would probably be easier if I put the glue on the back of the strip, but it is what it is. But there was a time I was said, you know what? Glue well, ain't really necessary. You don't really have to have glue. Just put the nails down in it. Wrong. Nails aren't going to hardly hold very well without the glue. So you do want to put some glue in it. I'm going to put out two on each board. And these being three quarters of an inch strong, they're not going through. I'd be upset if they were. Especially after I said they weren't. Alright, here we go. Get some little more glue. 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 Another thing about wood glue, besides if you're going to put and use wood glue, if you're going to do a project with it, get good glue. I use this here and I'm, and I've been very happy with it. Uh, I'm not saying it's a glue you should use, but it has worked very well for Candace and myself when we did our projects that we want to need to glue something with. I'm not going to say good old fashioned Elmer school glue won't work. Might very well work just fine. But that's what I get. I don't want it. I don't want this thing falling apart. Who ends up with it? And the reason I'm only putting two nails in here, these boards are pretty thick. 
little heavy. But remember, I'm gonna put the shelf on the other side. And uh, once I decide where to put it, I'll flip it back over and I'm gonna put some screws in it. And that's really gonna hold everything back together. Oh, back together. It'll hold everything pretty tight. So after that, nothing's gonna move. So now I'm gonna flip this over. And I'll probably end up, and I know I will, end up using some screws and I'll uh, drill some pilot holes when I do. And obviously, I'm going to have to put my shelf above that. And that might be a pretty good spot for it. But uh, what I mean, of course, it's going to the other side, but I don't want to have to nail through this and this to get to this. So I'll put it just above that on the other side. Let me go ahead and show you. Quit messing around here. All right, so. All right, look at there. I'm thinking about putting the shelf about that high. I'll get some measurements to square it up, but I think I'm gonna clean this up first. And I have another board here. Like I said earlier, this one is pretty straight. I think it's a little, it's a little too thick. I don't think I need one quite this wide, a full two by four. So this side here is gonna be against the shelf, so you won't see it. But this side, I think about ripping some a little up off of it if I use this board. And uh, maybe it'll take some of those nail holes out. I probably won't have to, and it may not take it all, because I'm not gonna cut the board in half. That's not enough. But I'm thinking it's, it's three and a half inch board, cut it at least half inch back. It may still have nail holes, but maybe they won't, won't look quite so ugly. Or, I thought about using this board. Now this would be the bottom. This would be the bottom of the uh, shelf, so you wouldn't really see it. This would be the top, of course. I'm not sure if I like that curve in it. So you can see, I hope you can, you got a pretty good curve. I'm trying to show you by looking at you and the camera and everything else, but you got a pretty good curve in it. I could actually cut that curve out and use it for something. But I don't know if you're seeing it very well. And the reason why I'm not sure about that is I might maybe cut the itch off of that too, but I like to put some hooks underneath, as you'll see. All right, we're recording again. My camera stopped recording. We're actually my phone because I got a call and it was a spam call, which I didn't answer. It just but the, but it stops recording when you get a call. And I get a lot of them. I used to not get very many, but since I I guess I've gotten older and you know I don't, don't want to get on a tear here, but there's no privacy anymore. I mean the the. the the day I turned 55, I got letters in the mail to join like the AARP and stuff on my birthday. I was, I was crazy. And now people out there know your age. And so they figure, well, he's an old man. We're going to just try to scam him out as much, you know. And that's what they are, they're scam calls. And I just don't answer them. But they still call them. If it doesn't come up to somebody I know, they better leave a voicemail if they want to talk to me. But anyway, let me get off my... Uh, High horse here, not high horse, soapbox, and get back to talking about woodworking. Anyway, what I was telling you earlier about this board here, if I cut some of it off, which is about an inch, you know, it's still going to have a little curve in it, which isn't too bad. The only problem I have with the curve, the problem I have with the curve, um, is I like to put little hooks underneath. It's right along underneath here. 
and if it's got a curve in it, it's going to make the hooks maybe not stand straight up and down. They may have a little tilt to them. I'm not too sure I want that. So most likely I won't use that for here. And I could always, I could always take, put that on my saw and take that curve out of them and cut it right out of that board. But, you know, I might have a place for that later. It may turn out to be where something else I do, that would be a really nice uh, look for it. So I'm gonna just put that to the side. And I'm gonna use this board right here, the straight. So before I do, we're gonna take to the table saw and get it all set up. I'm actually going this. I'm got lucky. This thing is the right length. It's uh, 25 and a half. I think I made those things on about 25. So it's the right length, but it's a little, a little. Uh, I think it's a little too wide. So I'm gonna take about a half inch off of it. And you'll see the one other thing I'm gonna do when I. After I nail it on, before I finish, I'm gonna put a little cap. And I might take, if I'm gonna use the scrap off a, uh, lattice work, come on, get with the program, Steve. Then uh, it's really not wide enough. And the reason why I want to put a little piece on there it's because it uh to give it a lip so when you put stuff on it that it won't slide off. Give a little lip so that you folks put whatever. I'm trying to make this so this would be something you want close to your door or something. So that's what the hooks will be for. You know, to put your key ring on there. And who knows what you'll put up there. It might be just something for decorations that they put up there, a vase with flowers. I don't know. But you want something to keep it from falling off. So I'm gonna put that all the way around. Heck, somebody might put it in their in their bedroom, hang, put the keys on the hooks, and put the billfold or whatever up on the on the shelf. And you don't want it sliding off, bouncing on the bed, and you get them on to go to work and you have to hunt for your stuff. So anyway, I'm sitting here rambling, but I'm gonna put that on there with some of that that just works slats. I did it on the last one. You'll see in that you saw in that picture, and it, it worked out real well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take five. And I'm going to get my saw set up and get my dust collector set up on it. And when we meet again, we'll be at the saw table and we're going to rip this thing down to get it where we want it at. So, stand by. Left a little bit of a, and that's probably me not keeping it up tight against that fence. Hope y'all can see that. Hope I'm doing it right. But I think we can live with it because I'll put that on the bottom. You won't see it on the bottom of our wall hanging. The shelf will be on the this this here will be the bottom of it. That'll nail to it, and uh, I think it'll be just fine. So. Take it over and get it attached. All right, guys, so I'm back over here where our uh, wall hanging is and ready to put the shelf on it. I'm gonna flip it over. As I explained earlier. And I'm gonna take a second, remember that first board we had? And what I'm going to do is, because this one's going to be needing to go about there, make it easier to work, I'm going to put the second one right here. And that way, it kind of squares it up. So I'm probably going to have to get off my behind and get this shelf board lined up correctly. Now we're just going to kind of get it squared up on this board. I'm going to say a 
about four inches. When the bottom's on the wood, put it right on help in it. That's four inches. That's four inches. Four inches. Four inches. Okay, how far are we here? That is seven eighths. Ooh, that's two and a quarter, so that's come back this way quite a bit. Now that's an inch and let's come back a little more. Yeah, we'll have to get our four inches again. That's all right. That's an inch and five eighths. Come on now. Work with me here. That is an inch and three quarter. So I need to pull it back just a little bit. That's an inch and a half. So it don't have to be perfect. Remember, this is supposed to look like bar wood. That is an inch and a half. I like that. That's three and a half. Actually, I kind of like the three and a half better than the four. Three and a half. Three and three quarter. Three and a half. Three and a half. Inch and a half. Well, most inch and a half. Now, early in my mind. So what I'm going to do first, though, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the 16 gauge. This got inch and a quarter nails in it. And I'm going to shoot a couple just to hold the board in place. And then I'm going to come back with a screw. And that should um, pull it on real tight where there's no way it's going to fall off. Um, I'm going to use these little screws right here. They're not very long. But they'll go through here, and they'll go in that board far enough, they should hold it on there. So I think that's just going to be fine. So we're going to nail it right now, just to get it to stay. All right. So let's go ahead and tack it down. All right, most likely this isn't going to split, but I've got the drill bit, I've got the drill. Miles will go ahead and do it. I'm just gonna randomly find a spot in the middle, run the screw. Now, what I'm going to do next, is I'm going to countersink them just a little bit. Just a little bit, because that way I don't, the main reason why I'm doing it is I hate for the screw head to scratch up people's walls. I'm not going to count sink them a lot, just a little. Okay. 
put a drill bit back in here. And we're going to put some screws in. There we go. Two in this one because it's flipped. I probably kind of sink them a little deeper than it had to be, but that's all right. They're going to get the job done. And I think it'll look a little more professional, too. I need all the help I can get. All right. I'm going to call that attached. I think I might put, <clears throat> I don't think I need to think about putting a few more nails in it, but I don't think that's necessary. So let's flip it over and see what she looks like. <clears throat> Not too bad. I like it. putting a lot of nails in those because wood glue should when it uh dries up <clears throat> it should pretty much hold them on there pretty good now let's look at this one see how this turned out pretty good i like that i like it what's that movie dumb and dumb i like it a lot like it a lot so, put a little glue on her, get her nailed. And this, like I say, this solves two, two problems. Don't take a lot of wood glue. It hides those ugly old holes, and it makes a way that we can make sure, kind of help keep stuff from falling off this thing, these shelves. So whoever gets this probably, hopefully they'll appreciate that. Again, this is going to take a whole bunch of nails. All right. So, where we're at now, I think it looks pretty good. Um, now it's a matter of deciding of what, what we're going to stain it. So that's not going to happen today. <clears throat> Excuse me, getting a little horse here. Actually, I'm going to leave that up to Cass to decide what, how she wants to uh, stain it, how she wants to make it look. Um, then we'll put some decorations on it. I've got some things I'm going to put on here and some hooks to put under here. And on the back, and I'll show you when I do it. For hangers, I'm gonna put uh, what's called a French cleat. And it kind of, I can never do it right with my hand, but one goes against the wall, one goes on this, and they kind of lock in together. I like those. They're a little higher cost than some other things you can do. Uh, but it, it it's secure. And it, it, mainly, and the real trick is whoever puts it up. I'll put one wide enough on here that they'll have plenty of, the piece that goes out here and the piece that goes on the wall will be the same length. So they have plenty of holes to put their uh, fasteners through, screws, whatever. Most likely you just drill a hole and you use those, uh, what do they call those things that go in that hole when you put the screw and expand? I can't think of it off the top of my head. But that's how you, you, you'll hang those the other, other half of the French cleave on the wall with that. And I think this turned out pretty good. Uh, hope you can see it in that camera. Okay, I finally got it propped up. You guys can have a look at it. And like I said, I think it turned out pretty nice. There's a little bit of difference 
And I think she did it all with the same stain, but it tends to be a little bit of color variation in the shelf and in the boards on the back, the fence boards. But you know, it actually makes it look good. And it, I'm sure it's because of different types of wood, but it's still all pine, all soft pine. But all in all, I, I think it turned out pretty good. And I think the people I'm going to give it to, they're going to like it. They're going to like it just fine. Okay, now I'm going to decorate it up. First, I'm going to put a a French cleat on the back. And I don't know if y'all are familiar with French cleats. But basically, this is how they work. Part of it go on the back. Part of it go into the wall. And they'll just lock in together. Now, this is the brand I use. It's not, I'm not, uh, it's called Hangman. I'm not politicking for them. It just happened to be the only brand in town where I went and bought these at. I think they're pretty cost effective. Of course, this is way too long. I'm going to cut me off a piece uh, on both halves that'll fit on the back of probably this, just this one right here and attach it to the back. Then when we get that done, we're going to dress the front up a little bit, and I'll show you what we're going to do there. These are the hooks and the little, uh, I guess you'd call them brad nails. Actually, they're uh, furniture nails, furniture tacks like you'd see in the back of a couch or chair or something. I'm going to install some of those in a hook. Hope it's so. Uh, Focus it in for you. I'm not sure which hook exactly I want to do yet, but these are my two choices on the hooks. Kind of like that right angled one. That would be this one right here. And it might work real well with actually that little hook, that little uh, brad nail right there. That might be the combination. And what I'll plan to do is to use four hooks. Probably line those up with the uh, gaps in those boards. Now let's put them just about far enough right if you want to hang a set of keys on there or a purse or a, a, a light uh, sweater or coat or something. And the brad nails, I'll just probably put a couple, one or two at least, one for sure, two at least, in about the center, all the way down. And I think that's going to look pretty good. I may not do but one, but uh, we'll see. I haven't really decided which one I'm going to go with that yet. I think it's going to look pretty good. But first, I think we're going to get the uh, French cleat installed on the back of it. So i got to get that cut down. Just stand by with me. I don't know about y'all, but I use these cutting wheels. I ain't never like using them, but they work. You gotta be careful. Because there is no reason why they call them death wheels. All right, let's get these mounted. All right, I got. <clears throat> All right, I got half of the French cleat mounted to the uh, shelf. And you'll see when you mount this one to the wall, and the wall will be on this side. So this little part here will stick out away from the wall. When you go inside this up against the wall and let it go down, bring this down, it'll go right in there and lock in, just like that. And it can't come off. There we go. It'll lock in just like that, and it won't come off. It'll stay there. The only trick is, of course, I've got the bar right here, so you got to make sure you get up under there. But, uh, yeah, I like these uh, French cleats. I like the way they work. I think they're secure. They hold a lot of weight. This thing's not going to carry a lot of weight, so it should be just fine. All right, well, we need to kind of dress up the front of it now. All right, guys. Well, I think I've got this shelf complete. I took those uh, poster nails I told you about and I put them in the uh, nail holes that were in the wood. I just thought the nail holes themselves, there's a time 
that that they look real good. I didn't like them in this for this uh, piece. And so I put these studs in. I think they look pretty good. And I also put them in down here where I put the hooks in. I kind of sorted them out, you know, it helps simulate holding that little, little piece of trim on. And I also put some, one, hope y'all can see it with my terrible camera work. One on each side here. There we go. There's another one like that on the other side. Like I said, I've done some of these and I didn't fill in the hole with that, that type of uh, nail. But I think in this instance, it turned out real well. Well, real well. One problem I had was that the holes were a little bigger than the little end of the nail. And the nails are similar to like a tack. And uh, they weren't going to stay in. So I thought about using some epoxy. My fear on that was is that the uh, epoxy is going to get it all over everything. And that would have ruined this piece. And I, and I really didn't want, I really was worried about that. So what I came up with, I used these little nails. These are 18 gauge, three quarter inch finished nails or, or uh, brad nails, they're going to call them. And I separated them either one or two at a time. And I'd put them in the hole and put the brad nail in with it, acted as a shim. They went in, they got really tight. So they're not going to fall out anytime soon. So that's going to do it uh, for this uh, project. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Now I'm gonna uh, uh, fess up. I get a lot, I get most of my ideas off of uh, YouTube without a doubt. And I'm always looking for different things. And quite a few stuff I've done so far has been from uh, one side in particular, called a bearded Viking that wouldn't work, so I believe. But whatever, I'll, I'll put a link to, the, to his uh, uh, channel in the description of this. Guys, you have a to see some of this stuff. He does pretty good stuff, and he helps us play it. He does really intimate, it, complicated, <laughs> complicated builds. But he also builds a lot of stuff that, uh, for someone like me who's trying to learn, get new at it, who is new at it, trying to learn and get better at it. So I use a lot of this stuff, uh, ideas a lot. But give it a look, have a look at it, and we'll give them a shout out. And soon I'll have another project for you guys I'm going to put on this channel and uh, kind of see y'all can see, uh, keep up with what I'm doing. I promise I'm going to get better as we go. All right, till then, see you.